The first signal of trouble surfaced in a warehouse near Rotterdam, not through an official notice, but through a simple shipping tag flagged with a warning. Rare earth origin unverified. Within hours, shipments destined for ASML disappeared from logistics records as crates were held back at Chinese ports under Beijing's newly imposed 0.1% verification rule. Anything containing even microscopic amounts of Chinese processed rare earths now required government sign-off. Assembly lines stalled. Technicians stood beside machines more expensive than military aircraft, unable to proceed because their materials were frozen by a quiet regulation buried inside China's export registry. It wasn't sabotage. It was a surgical policy move. One adjustment, and the world's most advanced, chip-making equipment effectively lost permission to operate. Investors in Amsterdam read that update alongside another stark reality. China supplies over 90% of refined rare earth elements and the magnets used across semiconductor machinery. SML's CFO, Roger Dassin, remarked on October 15th that the company had enough components for the short term, but the next few years depended entirely on uninterrupted trade flows. He also revealed that 42% of ASML's sales in the previous quarter came from China. Meanwhile, governments in Washington and Seoul issued separate guidance. Reuters noted that the latest rules covered any technology or machinery relevant to logic chips at 14 nanometers or below, and memory devices at 256 layers or more, with applicants evaluated case by case. South Korea's industry ministry announced it was reviewing the implications for its firms, which rely heavily on top-tier memory fabrication tools. The policy explicitly applies to overseas producers using Chinese origin materials, even when China isn't directly involved in the sale. Within a few days, analysts tied the new restrictions to the broader supply chain reality. A report from Alex Partners estimated that China controls roughly 70% of global rare earth extraction, 85% of their fining capacity, and around 90% of the production of alloys and magnets concentrations that give Beijing enormous reach through any licensing requirements. Writers describe these numbers not as theoretical risks, but as immediate constraints for manufacturers already burning through stockpiles after earlier export limits earlier in 2025. Then markets were hit with a second shock, this time from the Netherlands. The Dutch government invoked emergency powers to assert control over Nexperia, a Chinese-owned semiconductor firm based in Nijmegen, citing national economic security concerns. Ownership didn't shift, but the Dutch state gained the ability to veto or reverse major decisions. A court ruling also blocked Wingtech's chief executive from assuming a new role and placed most voting shares under a court-appointed administrator. Reuters dated the intervention to October 13th and detailed the extraordinary measures. At the same time, Beijing rolled out additional export controls. Reuters reported that China expanded its restricted list to include more rare earth processing steps and certain equipment categories a move that heightened China's leverage ahead of high-level diplomatic meetings. Rare earth licensing was no longer a single pass or fail process. It became a layered net. Certain elements, blocked outright, specific processing phases regulated, defense-linked end-users prohibited, and advanced chip thresholds subjected to extra scrutiny. SML's Dassin summarized the operational risk clearly. The company could weather temporary restrictions, but long-term tightening would threaten its supply continuity. The reason was straightforward. The precision motors, optics, positioning systems, and polishing compounds inside chip-making machines rely heavily on magnets and materials refined almost exclusively in China. The company's order book highlighted that vulnerability. Nearly half of ASML's quarterly demand came from Chinese customers, even while it projected flat revenue for 2026 despite rising orders driven by artificial intelligence. Across the ocean, the Wall Street Journal reported on October 9th that the new Chinese rules required approval if even a tiny 0.1% of a product's value could be traced to Chinese rare earths, an extremely low threshold that would force a large number of lithography components into Beijing's paperwork system. The journal described the scope as almost unheard of for a materials control regime. Then the policy landscape shifted again. Reuters reported today that China temporarily suspended export bans on gallium, germanium, and dantimony to the United States, moves interpreted by diplomats as part diplomatic signaling part fine-tuning off its negotiating stance. European officials also welcomed early signs that Beijing might delay or soften certain rare earth restrictions. These mixed signals made forecasting nearly impossible. One restriction could tighten, while another quietly loosened. The Nexperia case in the Netherlands demonstrated another dynamic. Controls can provoke countermeasures. 
After pressure from European manufacturers and extended diplomatic discussions, Bloomberg reported, via Reuters, that the Dutch government was prepared to adjust its order if Chinese chip shipments to Europe resumed under specific exemptions. That conditional stance captured the reality of an evolving feedback loop. Domestic security policies can trigger supply-side pushback, which then forces governments to consider their own measures simply to keep factories operating. For the semiconductor equipment industry, the immediate exposure isn't limited to ASML's final machines. It stretches across an intricate global supplier network. Motors, optical assemblies, laser units, stage systems, vacuum pumps, metrology tools, each containing materials and components tied, at some stage, to China's rare earth ecosystem. In October, China introduced new rules that make it harder to mine and process rare earth materials. These are essential for magnets, electric cars, and semiconductor tools. Starting December 1st, any foreign company that uses Chinese rare earth materials or Chinese-made equipment will also need a Chinese license before exporting its products. This is similar to how the U.S. controls chip exports. When both countries use rules that apply outside their borders, companies have to think about licensing early in the design process, not at the end. Car makers, power grid companies, and defense contractors watched prices closely. The IMF said rare earth prices jumped when China first announced restrictions this year, but futures prices suggest only small price increases through 2026. That means markets expect short periods of volatility when new policies come out, rather than a long-term price surge. The IMF also said China's earlier licensing rules caused a shock that disrupted inventories and procurement planning. Modern chip-making tools don't only depend on lenses, they need extremely precise magnetic systems and motion control parts. These rely heavily on rare earth magnets. ASML tried to calm worries, saying Chinese customers weren't hoarding machines. They were installing them in factories. Still, ASML warned that ongoing licensing problems could make it harder to follow long-term plans for EUV and high NA technology. Tech companies also pay attention to China's 14 NIM and 256 layer triggers because they match export control liens used by many countries. Reuters said China will check licenses tied to those levels one by one and deny anything linked to defense. This means a Dutch machine that uses an American subsystem and a Japanese magnet could all be delayed by Chinese paperwork if any piece contains Chinese materials. One missing permit could delay a whole machine worth hundreds of millions. These rules arrive in stages. Five rare earth elements became restricted in early November. The rules for foreign exporters start December 1st. Companies only have a short time to update parts lists submit paperwork, or find alternative components. But magnet suppliers cannot qualify new parts quickly. Car companies are also vulnerable. Earlier in 2025, they had to use up their magnet stocks because of China's controls. This time, buffer inventories are even smaller. Europe is hit especially hard because many of its components contain Chinese magnet material, even if the finished product looks European on paper. Reuters also reported a case in the Netherlands where the government temporarily took control of a strategic company, Nexperia, using an emergency law. Later, when shipments improved, the court signaled that the company could regain control. This shows that these interventions are usually temporary and depend on supply conditions. Stock markets reacted quickly. Rare earth mining companies and toolmakers in both China and the U.S. saw their share prices jump. U.S. companies also advertised plans to speed up domestic processing, but investors were also paying for the advantage of operating outside Chinese jurisdiction. At the same time, China sent mixed messages. Alongside the new restrictions, the Commerce Ministry talked about facilitating trade. Beijing also temporarily lifted certain U.S.-focused Banston gallium and germanium, metals at the center of earlier tensions. This suggests China is tightening and loosening controls deliberately to influence negotiations. The Wall Street Journal highlighted another detail. If Chinese rare earth content in a product is above just 0.1% of its value, it needs approval. That makes licensing unavoidable for many high-precision parts unless companies rebuild supply chains without Chinese materials. SML's financial results show the situation isn't a collapse. Third quarter orders were higher than expected because of AI demand, even though next year's revenue will likely be flat. The main risk now is not demand disappearing. Its delays caused by any single missing license, magnet, or subcomponent. On the diplomatic side, Reuters said a Dutch official expects Nexperia chips to reach customers soon, meaning some approvals are moving. Another Reuters report said China is reviewing ways to slightly relax rare earth rules, but not as much as the U.S. wants. The reason policies keep changing is simple. 
Both sides have leverage. Europe and the U.S. need Chinese magnets and materials, and China wants the revenue and bargaining power that comes with supplying them. This constant back and forth makes long-term planning difficult. The Netherlands is using corporate governance tools to protect strategic assets without nationalizing them, and these tools may become models for broader EU policy. Companies are preparing for two possible futures. One, very strict enforcement. Everything with more than 0.1% Chinese rare earth content needs a license. Softer rules. More exemptions for civilian uses. The first option means heavy paperwork and higher prices for non-Chinese magnets. The second means delays but fewer outright denials. Recent news about China pausing bans on gallium and germanium points to the softer path, but the October announcement shows the harder path is still possible. The big unknown is inventory. ASML said it has enough stock and alternatives to handle short-term issues, but gave no numbers. If approvals become predictable, companies can adapt. If approvals slow down randomly, inventories run out before replacements can be qualified. Finally, the IMF said prices spiked after earlier rare earth controls, but futures suggest prices may stabilize in the coming years. This means markets expect policy relief or new supply to temper the shock. If they're wrong, prices will jump again. If they're right, the main issue will become paperwork, not physical shortages. Across all of this, a clear pattern appears. Rules tightening, exceptions opening, courts stepping in, companies preparing, and markets hedging based more on bureaucracy than geology. If a major disruption happens, it won't come from one big headline. It will come from something small, like a license that didn't get approved on time stopping an entire machine while a factory waits for a magnet that suddenly requires paperwork no one even talked about before October.